We're finishing up the lighting circuit, the emergency lighting circuit, as well as starting to pull some low voltage runs. It is a Tuesday and we're in Middletown, Rhode Island. This is part seven of the video series. So what I got going on for today is I'm gonna show you guys that we actually pulled all the wires for the emergency battery units, the exit signs, as well as the exit signs with the remote heads on them. And these are just gonna shine down in the middle of the hallway. So we finished pulling all the wires for that. We're gonna start cutting that in very shortly. But first I gotta start focusing on this lighting. So basically I had a bunch of questions on how I'm doing Doing the lighting in this place so i'm going to take you guys through that right now in these treatment rooms here which is the room i'm in there's going to be a sconce to the right and there's also going to be a sconce to the left there so there's going to be two sconces per treatment room so there's three treatment rooms that's going to be six sconces as far as these other rooms go here these rooms are going to have two switches, so it's going to be a two-gang switch box. And basically, the easiest way that i found to do these is I like to bring a 12-3 up to the top of the ceiling. I will then junction box it with a four-square box, and then right on the cover, you know, red is going to do the pendant light, and then the black is going to do, let's say, the track light. But basically, this makes it super easy because once the drop ceiling's in, all i got to do is bring two 12-2s out of that four-square box. It's super efficient, and it just saves a lot of time. In this other area here, here, there's just going to be a strip light that's going to go onto the wall there so that's what that whip is hanging there for and these other uh, switches here are just going to be for some other lighting that I got, you know, basically junctioned up there again. And these are what the other rooms look like with the junctions on the top of the ceiling. We also started pulling some Cat 6. We actually finished all these runs as well. This is just going to be for some Ethernet. And now here is where the low voltage lighting is coming into place here. So basically, there is going to be a ton of strip tape everywhere. There's going to be some inside uh, and around the baseboards and stuff, and there's going to be some underneath the countertops. So I'll cover that more in depth. But this is the room here with the 11 switches in it. And, you know, I can't wait to start getting all of that cut in and all that wired because that is going to take a very long time cutting all that in, running all the wires into the right places. And there, again, is some more actual low-voltage wire for that LED strip tape. And like I said, there's going to be a piece of baseboard with a chamfer in it. And that strip tape is going to follow that chamfer all the way down. So it's going to be a lot of work to get that to work. And eventually, we'll probably solder everything because that is my, you know, method of choice to wire uh, strip tape. I like to solder everything instead of the crimp connections. I just think the solder is better. In this hallway here, there's going to be a bunch of recessed lights. And in these rooms over here, there's going to be some 2 by 2 architectural flat panels here. So again, you're seeing those four square boxes. We're going to eventually start this fire alarm. We started demoing the wires a little bit, just meaning by cutting the tie wraps and, you know, letting them hang in the ceiling so we can see what we're up against. And we also started cutting in the panel. So this panel is basically completely cut in. And now we're going to start the other one. So if you're in Massachusetts or Rhode Island, give us a call.